Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mean Boys Podcast. I'm Keith Carey. I'm Joe Dush. And I'm Teenage Cartoon Caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> you really are. You're like a fucking, there was some like cartoon about like a slacker caterpillar and the dad was like, why don't you get into your cocoon already? And like, whatever, dad. And I'm then gonna, you like, I have a hundred arms and they all have shitty wristbands. Yeah, I'm exactly. going to have a chrysalis of Green Day posters. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Although I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't slam you in such a way because I'm realizing like the three of us in our own individual way look like some kind of invertebrate. I would say <laughs> <laughs> sort of. we all look primordial. We really yeah, do. yeah. <laughs> Just like uh, in the ancestors of uh, early life page in the biology yeah. textbook. We all we all look like we, you know, oozed out of a bubbling pit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're all hot and bothered. I uh, <laughs> sure am. Yeah. I think it's ready for what's the name of this segment, Connor? The Mexican Joker! Oh, uh, outstanding. Wait. Ramsey, you are <laughs> fired for not discovering that earlier. <laughs> that is fucking six podcasts down the drain. You were not turn, enriched. Turn it back on for a second. Please. I saw Tavigo! <laughs> Good night, everybody. He's just, just a lonely Mexican man shouting that in a cave full of fucking Aztec heads. <laughs> Just consulting a stone yeah. tablet. No, that was that was El Chapo at his new hideout. Yeah. <laughs> All right, anybody want to go first? Oh, I'll take it away. All right. A Danish photographer staged a photo of a giraffe smoking a cigarette. The giraffe then threw on a leather jacket, hopped on a motorcycle, and asked if his wife ever had a black tongue in her pussy. <laughs> <laughs> That's one bad giraffe, you guys. <laughs> BMX legend Dave Mira was found dead of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The bro community is stunned and have united in flying their truck nuts at half mast. <laughs> <laughs> How do you? Is it just like oh? Are you, is it half mast or is it just cold love, out that yeah, day? Yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love jokes that don't make logical sense, but they just feel so right. Yeah, it's funny. Like, <laughs> it's jazz, baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Michigan has passed a law making anal sex punishable by 15 years in prison. Lawmakers say the bill is meant to combat people having sex with animals. Critics say the bill targets homosexuals, to which the lawmakers responded, yeah, you know, animals. <laughs> oh, I, I have a Mexican joke off Showdown, because I have another joke about that. Oh, okay. Oh, my goodness. Take wait, it, oh, take, shit, take Ramsey it, left. Showdown! <laughs> uh, Senators, Michi Senators in Michigan passed a law banning anal sex with the punishment being up to 15 years in prison. The bill is entitled, You like sodomy, do you? Well, how about you sit here and smoke a whole carton of sodomy? <laughs> Damn it. That's much better I gotta than mine. I got to give it to Keith, but yeah. don't get me wrong. Both enriched my life. <laughs> <laughs> the German Vendelstein fusion reactor became the first device on Earth to produce hydrogen plasma. Prime Minister Angela Merkel promptly announced, Not all fusion reactors get raped by refugees. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they're raping people. I tell you, they're raping. <laughs> bunch of rapers. I guess it's me now. Bunch of uh, big brown we'll rapers. We'll keep the circle going. We'll figure it out. Okay, yeah, yeah. Rapper DMX was found unconscious outside of his hotel after a drug overdose. Toxicology reports show that narcotics caused his heart to stop, his blood pressure to drop, and his kidneys to shut him down, open up shop. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god! <laughs> Jesus. Any, any kind of rhythmic cruelty is just—it <laughs> really is. It just it makes it extra special. It's like it's like a hug with a squeeze. Uh, a Florida man has been accused of throwing an alligator into a Wendy's fast food restaurant. He said to authorities, "Sorry, but Keith's mothers wanted one of them square burgers." <laughs> Ah, I can barely fact, say it. The fact that she calls them them square. square you you want to hear something real funny? <laughs> sure. Uh, please. My girlfriend uh, Chelsea was fucking looking up uh, like weird news stories to help me with this, uh -huh. and she saw that one. She's like, "You should do a joke about that." And I'm like, "They're for sure gonna do a joke <laughs> about, <laughs> me about that." Ramsey, They're everywhere. Hit me, hit me with the reverb. Any there, mom? My mom joked. She me called it. <laughs> Don't you get it? Any of my mom joke they've ever made, they've already thought of. <laughs> they won't like, stop until we're all dead. This is the Logan's run of hurting your feelings. <laughs> uh, casinos are adjusting their sales practices to appeal to millennials. One of their most successful attractions is the liberal arts education roulette. <laughs> I mumbled the word liberal. Huh. 
A U.S. soldier killed an enemy combatant in Iraq with nothing but a spoon. ISIS forces are regrouping and mourning the loss of their leader, Ahmed the Angry Bull of Syria. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is this going yogurt? Are we going sherbet? Uh, but, believe me, there's a lot of drafts of just me writing foods that come in balls. <laughs> and there's a veiled <laughs> Jeff Dunham slam in the middle of it, if you're a true connoisseur. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, unintentional fun. Whoops. Protesters are trying to shut down a Georgia dry cleaner after a YouTube video was leaked of him making racist comments. He said to the picketers, go get your purple suits clean for your son's court appearance somewhere else. I need to bleach my robes. I mean sheets. <laughs> <laughs> A Pennsylvania district judge has banned the wearing of pajama bottoms in his court. A leader of the coalition of basic bitches responded, First they came for our frappuccinos and we said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Viewers of Super Bowl 50 were shown a commercial for the Church of Scientology. The spot ran 30 seconds, 28 of which featured Tom Cruise looking at a vagina and shouting to camera, I am all about this. Damn, where's the uh, reverb when you need it? <laughs> no! <laughs> They can't all be winners! They're dated! <laughs> a new yeah. study shows bullied teens are six times more likely to commit suicide than their peers. Scientists called this survey of the Mean Boys listening audience an example of natural selection in the modern world. <laughs> <laughs> Our fans really are creeps. <laughs> they make me uncomfortable. <laughs> Guys, uh, the, the, the level that you are into the show, uh, all six of you, is horrifying. Yeah, and really, I, yeah. It makes me very happy. <laughs> yeah, it's like pretty much nobody likes the show, but the people who like it really like it. I've realized that, like, oh, if we keep doing this, I'm definitely going to get some weird packages. <laughs> oh, oh man. Yeah, yeah, someone's like, I made a pinata of Keith. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be, like, it's some... full of cum. <laughs> yeah, it's full. There's going to be some John Hinckley scenario where oh. fucking, like, Ted Cruz takes a bullet and they're like, we did it for Joe! <laughs> <laughs> Just a wall full of pictures. It's not going to be taking a bullet. It's going to be taking a load. He's going <laughs> to bust into a porn yeah, set. Actually, I'll encourage that. Don't shoot anybody, listeners, but if you want to come on any of the presidential yeah. candidates from afar, <laughs> we, the Mean Boys support that. How? What, what are you, like, up in the like book depository window with your, like, extender <laughs> on your desk? <laughs> just like, all right, this is. I'm going to put it into the CO2 How tank. How could one load come gun? from the grassy knoll and another come from we, the I, magic I, I, jizz? I, I, How is his I, left eye burning when the see, book depository see, was see, from I, the northeast? What I'm thinking is the, the come first into like a water balloon situation, and uh -huh. then it's a slingshot. Like that's all right. I don't want Dennis the Menace listening <laughs> to the show and trying to assassinate Bernie Sanders. I want John Kasich to get a load in his fucking nostril. <laughs> He's actually one of the nicer ones. Ted Cruz, yeah. yeah. Can, oh, come nice. on, Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz already looks like he is come. Like come, really on, does. come on his face in the shape of an M like a Zorro Z for Mean Boys. <laughs> he really does. He looks like you, Ted Cruz looks like you came on the floor and then just watered it. <laughs> <laughs> Gross! Uh, do we have... Do, uh, I have one more. Okay. I'm, oh, I'm he gets one more because we... Okay. I have one more as well. All I right. have nothing. A New York couple is facing lawsuit for firing their nanny after discovering she was HIV positive. When asked for comment, the nanny replied, A spoonful of sugar helps Truvada go down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Sofia Vergara has claimed that she doesn't understand why women don't like being objectified. And this is added to the list of things she doesn't understand, including fractions and the fact that the sun and the moon are not the same person. <laughs> <laughs> Where did they go when it's night? <laughs> oh, that was... Can we... That's a new character, Keith. <laughs> Sofia <laughs> Vergara. <laughs> Oh man! Post menopause, <laughs> Sophia. Yeah. How do you, how do you feel about blowing the the guy from the patriarch of Married with Children? Oh, he's not my boy. Oh God! Well, the way Mexican women age, she's probably gonna look worse than Keith when she gets fifty five. <laughs> she's Colombian and she's actually eighty two. She's killing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the cocaine keeps me strong. Shit, we don't have to reverb. Oh, that was the Mexican Joker. Oh, wait, I love it. Ramsey has one fucking job to just stand there and press the button like a good monkey. Ugh. And he fucking. That better that was be not because of his skill level, that not was... his ethnic background. <laughs> his general monkey like I assure, appearance. I assure you, if he were an actual monkey, he'd be one of the dumb ones. Like, you couldn't teach him sign language. Everybody. Trying to fuck a banana. Everybody go Google Ramsey Badawi, and then when nothing comes up, go on my Facebook, and you'll see a picture of his monkey face. <laughs> Slam! He does. He looks like a new wave chimp. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid haircut. I hate him. <laughs> oh, oh my god. I'm just being mean because he's not here. Yeah. Well, that, that was, was a, a that was a heck of a Mexican joke. Sure was. Was. That was a lot of fun. Um I think we're gonna move into a new segment, oh, Joe. Yeah. 
I um, God, I keep talking over your fucking intros like a babbling dolt. Anyway. Oh, yeah. I was going to let you introduce your own segment. I wasn't going to be like, here's I, Joe's <laughs> existential crisis, <laughs> <Anyway>. Joe. <laughs> well, yeah, I, this is a new segment called Joe's existential crisis. Wait, I, I, think, I think we have a, a, a jingle for this. I, life is meaningless. <laughs> 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 we are lost in a void of an uncaring God. <laughs> Yo soy muy empty. <laughs> Yo soy no I care. cried through the heavens, por qué, and I heard nothing. Oh, nada. <laughs> Todos somos nada. God. Anyway, I have a very good friend, you guys, who um, oh, I've, I've been friends with this person for like eight years now. Consider her a very close friend. She invited me to a cat baby shower. Yeah, yeah. I thought cats didn't like getting wet. All right, I'll see you guys later. My name's Connor. Well, tell you this guy, this cat certainly doesn't. Uh, <laughs> what? Oh God, I don't. Anyway, know. anyway, yeah. So, like, I mean, I think we know the kind of show we do here, everyone. I think we know the kind of tastes of our listeners. I don't think there's a lot of people who host cat baby showers among us. I would hope not. Yeah, yeah. No. So, like, now I'm just thinking, like, who am I fucking... Why does she think I would want to do... Like, who am I being fake around? Is this the fake Joe? Is this the scary, well, that, like, that's dark the thing, Joe? Like, when, it, that, when that kind of shit happens with someone that you think you know, and you're like... I, if someone would have told me, like, a category of people that can be eliminated from the earth, uh, people that throw cat baby showers would be like, in the furnace, don't need them, yeah, dead for weight. sure, yes. Yeah, she, you know, she, Zika virus, go for it. She had a registry, Connor. A cat baby shower what? registry. And like, where? I, fucking dialone.com? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, fucking, it's like, it had a scratch, it's not even like just she started, needs... Just started a... GoFundMe for the cleaning of your apartment when yeah. they eat your flesh no, no, after no, you no, die, no, no, and no, no, it no, discovers not, you. And it's not even like shit you'd have in your house, like she needs an old sock to play with, it's like, buy me a scratching post, I'm not buying you... A fucking scratch. Yeah, you, yeah, you go committed to a cat. Don't put this yeah. on us. You don't buy someone a scratching because you split it with like three or four people so you can all say you got or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know what horrifies me too is like, is that who I really am? Is this just the, a facade I put up? Am I secretly a person who's dying inside because I want to be going to cute little Hallmarky things like Man. cat baby showers? You know? Probably. Oh, I think so too. I had a similar feeling at Christmas. My mom bought me a Bazinga shirt. A what? A, like from the Big oh, Bang. Oh my theory. god. Oh my god. Yeah, that was a weird just like. Of all the things you've done to me, this is by far the worst. <laughs> you, thought, you wore that shirt at least once. Oh, I for sure came on it, but I didn't use okay. it. Yeah, well, that, that is my official like <laughs> secret jizz rag. I mean, all your clothing, I would imagine, is just stained fluids. Oh, that's just crusty. That was, that was my <laughs> least favorite uh, middle school reading assignment, the secret jizz rag. Well, <laughs> 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 oh, but the Nazis and all it, that shit. It, it just it's trying like, to jerk it in an attic. Yeah, the it's hypochondriac. Just, it's, it's just in the fucking main urinal at Wayside School, getting came on by all the students. <laughs> All right, that's an elementary school book reference. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, your knowledge is all like, like, like whimsical old. Like, I bet you like know what the name of that like stick in a hoop is called, or like the ball. You know, I all, <laughs> it's all like childish, like whimsy, and then just like antiquated I like terminology. I believe the stick in the hoop is called mumblety peg. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm not kidding. Oh my shit! No, I don't, I don't know if that's. Motherfucker, I know that's you do want to go to a cat baby shower? I, I think you're right, man. But here, this is what we were talking about. Mum- Mumble tea pig sounds like something Wilder Woodrow Wilson enjoyed, but <laughs> kept on the DL. <laughs> he did. That's what he fucking watched his kids playing while he like signed over the country to the Federal Reserve and just wept. <laughs> <laughs> We've we been were, all over the place on this show. Well, we were, t- you know, and we were talking like before Connor got here about how, like, while I have a weird, con- like, the strangest knowledge of weird things, Connor, Connor is one of the smartest people I know, but he has no knowledge to base it on. Like, the, two, <laughs> the two or three just utterly mundane suburban things he knows about, he can weave into a lot of beautiful shit. But he's the most misinformed. You might be the like. I Most have, ignorant smart person I know. I have like a laser gun with like one percent battery. <laughs> yeah, you're like a pots and pans robot made out of like spare facts, and then it's just spackled yeah. over with hate. Robot, Are robot. You, Sarah what? Palin See, over there here. Is, there's the hate. a pots there's and pans don't robot. You hate when you got there's a, the hate that covers up the you're yeah. right. Yep. <laughs> Every time you got a good slam, but you mispronounce something, oh, it just it's the worst. It just, this podcast brought to you by the straw man argumentative <laughs> fallacy. <laughs> My name's Connor McSpadden. If you feel like everybody's trying to get you and they're kind of getting you, call one of them fat or gay. Use the promo code ME to never ever learn anything and have no friends. The straw man argument. <laughs> Oh, 
You see, I, I paid attention for two weeks in uh, uh, English uh, 1A in community college, and now I can make that reference, but I don't know, like, you know. That's good enough. Who yeah, Hall and Oates that's are. That's just it. He just, everything he you says. You for sure do know who Hall and Oates are. I was trying to think of a better example, but I can't think of oh, something so I don't know about. There's a video online of you and me singing Hall and Oates. Everything he says is just to the limit of his knowledge, but it's just all he needs for the moment, so he can yeah. just play this shell game of faux intelligence. The rest of his life. <laughs> I, no one has ever uh, said I was dumb more than me. I think that can definitely... Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> good golly. <laughs> well, all right. I think that was a great that <laughs> a most a pretty... existential crisis. <laughs> uh, that was a pretty great abandon the premise 40 seconds in. <laughs> yeah. Each other. I believe that was the mission statement of this whole podcast. Welcome to the jumping off point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately to- for my co-host, it's not the top of a building. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to the Flimsy Pretext Podcast. <laughs> Jesus. Shepard, what do you got for us? If you were like a Looney Tunes like, cross-dressing to get the bad guy, that would be like, Hi, my name's Flimsy. Flimsy Pretext. <laughs> <laughs> I'm awfully cold. <laughs> it's Flimsy. I'll come a-calling on you this evening. And <laughs> well, your name might be Flimsy, but I'll tell you right now, I'm anything but... <laughs> It's a bonus joke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, fuck everything. We're going to commercial. <laughs> Hello, folks. It is I, Dr. Edgar Mortaro of Mortaro's Baby Coffins. You know what we say. At Mortaro's, we make the unexpected death of your child less melancholically maddening. I, for one, would like to thank you all for choosing Mortaro's for all your infant mortuary services. I have, of course, become aware of the competing child mortuary in town, run by my former colleague, Hayworth Grogmeyer. So I would like to thank all our customers, and especially our repeat customers, whose treacherous wombs so hostile to the seed of life ensure their repeat business. You know, the corporeal remains of a deceased infant needn't solely be a hideous reminder of God's indifference. It can be a veritable corpsecopia of earthly riches. I, for one, hear much to do in the matter of stem cells, but not to do on the subject of post-mortal effluvia. But Edgar, is not the discharge of unembalmed remains the epitome of putrescence? Hardly. From your precious infant corpse, I will squeeze from a bolus of decay, the finest facial beautifying tonic. That's right, ladies. The withering fruit of your womb can endow your face with the most enticing paleness. Waste not your baby's carcass. Want not the countenance of a Viennese harpist. So take that, stem cells. Here's a joke for you folks. What did the infant mortician teach to the abortionist? Patience! Aha! How lightness dispels the horror. Yes, yes, that is the sort of levity and personal touch you are not like to find under the service of Hayworth Grogmeyer. I simply cannot overstate what a shoddy and inferior baby mortician he truly is. Does Hayworth Grogmeyer offer this sort of personal attention to all his clients? No. No. Does Hayworth Grogmire invent a post-mortal effluvia-based skin product clandestinely purchased by the Proactive Corporation? No. Has Hayworth Grogmire been producing necrophiliac pornography and secretly distributing it by the graveyard of the unclaimed so that necrophiles have a safe outlet for their deviant urges leaving his client's baby corpses unmolested? No, no, no. I say only a fool would choose Hayworth Grogmire. You will that- stop this slander at once, Mortaro! Uh, uh, Hayworth Grogmire, what I... This is my page commercial advertisement. You will leave this sound studio at once. I shall do no such thing, Mortaro. You've been besmirching my good name since our work together at the Budapest Toddler Embalming Academy, and it ends today. I say it ends today, Edgar. It is you whose abilities are questionable. You have your nose half in the formaldehyde, I'd say. How dare you? You know it to be true. I saw your latest glass eye installation, Mortaro. Did you get an F in cosseting, or are you trying to make your dead babies look like fleshy sock puppets? You mercurial son of a Cossack. You come into my radio program and spew such slander, I'll have you run out of town! I'll have you de-licensed from the Baby Corpse Handlers Union! I... I... Oh... Oh, Hayworth, Hayworth, I, I just realized. What... 
What fools we've been, Hayworth. I, we've had it all wrong. Don't you see? See what, Edgar? There's no need for our infant mortuary businesses to compete, Hayworth. There are more than enough dead babies for all who wish to dispose of them. My God, you're right. And there always will be. God will always delight in destroying those too young to be marred by the sin of the world. Why, in the third world, babies die. In developed nations, babies die. Babies die whether they are cared for properly or not. Babies die from easily curable diseases their impoverished parents cannot treat. Babies of privilege die from easily flammable mattress bedding. And SIDS! And SIDS! Wonderful SIDS! Oh, Hayworth, I am so sorry. You are a fine, fine infant mortician, and I'm proud to call you friend. And are you, Mortaro? Your excellence in the craft of child corpsery is unparalleled. Oh, embrace me. <laughs> and we're back, everybody. Wow. I, I gotta say, Dr. Mortaro wanted, like, five minutes of advertising time. I'm like, we're gonna have to charge you for that. And he was like, he's got, I, business he's got is booming. Yeah. yeah, well, you know. You'd, you'd think he could have trimmed that down and, like, done another take, but. I mean, I think the narrative of it and the <laughs> spontaneity was, I mean, I. You gotta respect truth in advertising. You sure do. Yeah, well, anyway, I think it's a. Uh, it's time to move have on we to sufficiently our... created a fourth wall here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think our friend Dr. J- Mortaro is a... Dr. Jodasho. Well, you know what? It's time to move on to Devil's Advocate, you guys. This is where we take an unpopular opinion and argue in favor of it and debate it. I think we'll learn a little about life and ourselves. Mean boys, don't you think? Excuse I me, think I just need to throw up in my mouth a little bit. All right, I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to begin. Oh, the saccharineness. It's terrible. Anyway, my devil's advocate opinion of this week is uh, uh, gay marriage is a bad idea. Uh, we shouldn't strive for it because uh, I think equality is swell, but marriage is a bad idea. It's not really that natural. They don't really work. They have a less than 50% success rate. So rather then I think straight people should be coming up to meet us rather than us going down to meet you guys. Well, frankly. Keith, you're straddling the fence. You're, you're bisexual. Do you think that we should be monogamous or polyhamorous? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, is this turning into like a real opinion? Jo- oh, no, there's well, a ham. Jo- <laughs> See, that would imply that he needs more than one ham to, to sate his appetite. <laughs> Which he surely does. Yeah. I, I, no, you go one ham and one turkey. I'm bi. <laughs> go both ways. Hey, if you need a turkey, I've got two co-hosts of the show with me right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was no sense to get everybody. Nothing. This is a record no, for segment derailment. Just, just nothing will be as good as life was just now. <laughs> At that moment. What a tragic statement. <laughs> Joe, here's my thing with that opinion, yeah, and yeah. I actually am going to disagree with you. Okay. Uh I think that you just like saying that you oppose gay marriage because it mm. sounds cool. No. I think we need You to... think gay people shouldn't be able to get married? No, that's not my point. My point oh, okay. is is rather than it's They shouldn't like, get married. It's like, let's say you have a shitty building that excludes people. The building's about to torn down. There's nothing worthwhile in the building. It's full of roaches and shit. Rather than be like, hey, wouldn't it be a good idea if we let everyone into this shitty building? Why don't we tear the building down and build a new one that's good? Especially if, say, like oh, we have a model please. of this. Well, yeah, you for would, the love of God, well, we, tell we, me it, Joe Dosh's system for relationship. Like, what's your idea? Like, all right, well, the, you choose a you choose a blood partner. <laughs> the gay community was offered mm-hmm. like a different building, though. You know, they were offered the what the civil union building, and no, they no, chose not. They no, wanted to run into not, that burning one. No, but it's it's not a one that's just like what you did, but sounds different because we're icky and gross. That's not what I mean. What I mean, like, okay, like every gay married couple, male couple I know, like gets shit on the side. Every single one. I don't know. A, I don't know any strictly monogamous gay male couple unless the ones that are just too old to go out and fuck anymore. Really? Yeah. Are they, are they like chill about it, or is yeah. it just like a? Okay. Yeah. Some people are like, yeah, I love you, but like, I'm tired of fucking you. You're tired of fucking me. Your dick is too big. My ass is too small. You know, but like there's a real Goldilocks situation like, we've got like, here. But like, together, oh, this but, dick is just yeah, right. This dick is just right. It is. There is such a like an efficiency to gay sex that does not exist in the straight oh, world. God, it's just you're just waste all this time dilly dallying, you guys. All this just <laughs> funsin you guys have to do. It's yeah, because what? Because you're in love? Fucking gross. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, gay, gay sex is really like a bicycle. I mean, you can't improve on it. I mean, it's, just, it's, it's still the most efficient land And it land looks funny transport. that there's like one it's big good. wheel and one tiny wheel. Yeah, it's <laughs> there's, there's plenty of torque. I mean, that's probably what Joe prefers because he's old-timey and also just a bottom. Spray, so. spray some WD-40 on it and get it done. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Yeah. Hey, 
I tell you what, if there's one person at this table who's been fucked lubelessly, it's not me, and it's not Keith Carey, so. (laughs) (laughs) Raise raise his hand sheepishly. (laughs) It's Ramsey. (laughs) You guys read that book. You guys read that book, The Kite Runner, right? (laughs) (laughs) Ramsey Ramsey just is metaphorically because he produces this. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, look, every every week I tell him to talk more, and every week he spends longer time smoking outside and resenting what the us. Fuck, what the fuck else could he have to do? I mean, I mean, I don't know. Uh, anyway, he's got nothing to do. Game. I, I don't think Ramsey should be allowed to marry. Well, uh, I, I, I got to <laughs> pop out for a minute, guys. I got to go to Anchor Bar in five days. I got to prepare. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> all right. Yeah. No. 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 Inside. Get your get. Put your inside baseball bat away, Joe. All right. All right. Uh, Oh yeah, that was Devil's Advocate. Yeah, I guess <laughs> that was petering out. Yeah, what, it sure was. Well, what do you suggest as like an alternate? To, like, um, I don't, I don't know. Like maybe just everybody should have like an open. Like I don't know. Maybe like the idea of marriage like doesn't exist as a government institution. Maybe like we kind of be like, wow, hey, since our version isn't working, and like you know we're recognizing gay people, and they kind of do it like a little bit of a different way, and maybe oh. it has a higher success rate. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe like instead, don't, like. like like, don't bring people into an idea that's bad. Like, bringing, making people equal under an idea is bad, I guess, is a good thing, but it doesn't change the fact that the idea is bad. Well, how about this? You you get married, and then in five, every five years, you're allowed one more side chick. <laughs> like they just accumulate? Yeah, for the first five you, years. You, you're, your like dick levels up? You're, face, you're, 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 uh, you're like, know, faithful. And then after five-year anniversary, you know, take her out for dinner. You go, go to a boat ride. And you'd fuck her cousin, and then <laughs> of only your cousin, you can't you can't fuck her cousin and the babysitter. You got it, you know. And then ten years, you get another one. Is this maybe? And see, this is why a quantitative I like, I like easing. Brain. This is why this is why straight people can't do like side things because your brain goes right to I'm going to fuck her cousin. Like no, you fuck some stranger who's not going to wander into your bubble like we do. Oh, I mean, I don't. We I'm, can just dial up on our computer machines. I've never I've never had you know a, a committed vagina in my life and been like I I'm gonna this is just not doing it. <laughs> I need more of these. I'm just like, oh god, it's the it's got the same flaps as yesterday. <laughs> like you know, I'm... Uh, maybe we should I, invent some kind of like laser that scrambles your pussy so it's new and exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, can you put your twat on shuffle like you <laughs> <laughs> like you fucking muffle sh- like, you sh- <laughs> <laughs> like you shine a laser pointer into a dog's eyes and it just screws him up for a minute. <laughs> I mean, I, I've I've seen a twat like like thick enough you could shuffle it like. <laughs> like oh old. no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> little theater of the mind, folks. Uh, I'll be doing sound effects. Jeez. All right, well, my name is Michael Winslow. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just uncomfortable now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you not say douche out that Hun's womb with a dose of Lysol I last sure episode? Did. I should. There's something about vagina flaps. That's just that's just where I check out. Any kind of thing with the vagina flaps or anything to do with like inside the pee hole. I just. I just oh yeah, I, just, I can't. Oh. I just dude, I can't down. listen to any of that. Like the oh, yeah. fucking haunted that that Chuck Palahniuk book. Um, I I can't. Um, no. Okay. Yeah. Read a so lot you've never have you ever seen the video with the guy and the screwdriver? Oh, don't. Keith, don't even <laughs> describe it to me. Don't stop. I don't uh, have guy, to. You've already the, done it. The guy has a uh, screwdriver and he fixes Keith, his daughter's <laughs> swing set. That's what happens in that video. Just I just decided. All right, that was uh, that was Devil's Advocate, and uh, I think it's time for a word from our sponsors. It's the new hit show everyone's talking about. Premiering this Thursday on the 8 o'clock comedy block on CBS, it's passive, aggressive, and dumb. Hey, why'd you leave your girl magazine on my pillow, Ben? There's some articles in there I think you should read about our time in the bedroom. You're right. You should make this chocolate bunk cake. Uh, you got the recipe so we can eat it in bed, and I'll make a comforter out of paper towels in case I spill. And this week's episode is one you don't want to miss. Come on, babe. We haven't had sex in months. I'm just worried that if you do, you're going to have a heart attack. Maybe you hit the gym. I don't know who this gym guy is, but if it gives me pussy, I'll hit him with my car. Come along for the ride with America's favorite family. Mommy, why do we have to go to a different store when we're shopping for daddy's clothes? Because daddy hasn't been taking care of himself lately. All all I've been fucking doing is taking care of myself. Punk come out of my body in the break room at work because you got a snowball for a cunt. Maybe I'd be in better shape if I burned some calories doing something other than drafting suicide notes. Kathleen, you fucking whore! I just wanted to know why Daddy doesn't like JC Penny, Mommy. Daddy doesn't like anything anymore! Do you like me? We're not going to the zoo! And make sure you check out our other new smash hit show, Chuck Lorre jingling his keys in front of a Walmart. Every week, Chuck amazes pie-eyed patrons of America's favorite tumor-like retail while they drool in a state of orgasmic ignoro bliss, and he makes funny noises. 
Coochie, coochie, coo, you mayonnaise-blooded simpletons. All right, guys, we are back uh, after that word from our sponsors. I think it is time to close out the show with a round of our favorite game show. Which of the following? That is never going to get old. (laughs) It's really not. (laughs) Wait, can you turn it back on just one second? I'm not even a fan of this band, but... uh... All aboard! (laughs) Did (laughs) it! Is that, is that what your dad sounds I, like I, in the I, theater of his own mind? <laughs> <laughs> no, my dad has a very lovely uh, harmonizing singing voice. Uh, a real Gene Simmons. All right, play, the, j- play the jingles. Uh, all right, here we go. This week, uh, you know, I was kind of torn out a couple different themes I was bouncing around, but I found, I found a list that was uh, really captivating to me. Which of the following is not a real male porn star? Oh, my. Interesting. Number one, A, Zeb Atlas. B, Dale DeBone. C, Ken Schlong, or D, Herschel Savage? <laughs> okay, well, uh, there's no way there's two Jewish male porn stars in the world. <laughs> Zeb and Herschel. <laughs> what, what was Zeb's last name again? Atlas. Oh, you got Jesus. the weight of the world on his shoulders. Oh, it's, a, it's a sequel to Cloud I'm... Atlas. <laughs> 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 this is the big true true zip. <laughs> um, well, can, uh, we, can we see them? I, I, if I don't have a visual. Okay, they're there. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. This is an interesting word. Uh, Ken, Ken Zeb and Herschel is, is, is a really great team for like, <laughs> like a vaudeville gay act. You know? <laughs> yeah. He's going to throw hula hoops on my erect cock. Yeah, I know, I know they're like spinning plates on top of his dick. Zeb, I slipped on the puddle of lube. That's not lube, Herschel. Uh, God damn it. I'm going to go Herschel Savage. I'm going to go Zeb. This is another example of why we were born way too late in history. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The fake male porn star is Ken Schlong. Oh, wow. It's like Ken Jong. He's Asian. Ah, oh, damn it. It's a hiding in plain sight. That, it's that, so obvious. That like that Ramsey, just a little reverb if you could turn it down. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sorry. We, this is the most we've ever asked you to do. <laughs> and it's so little. It's Which the of thing. the following is not a real male porn star? A, Byron Long. B, Brian Pumper. C, John Doe, Doe spelled like cookie dough. Or D, Dennis Filler. Brian Pumper sounds like he owns like a Santa's Christmas tree village in Illinois <laughs> somewhere. So. Brian Pumper's Subaru dealership yeah. right off the five in Montana. <laughs> See, I feel like Brian Pumper has like a mildly successful like bar blues band. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we're the all Brian agree. Pumper soul experience. Um, well, we're all agreed that Brian Pumper can be a lot of things, but not Pum- a male porn star. <laughs> so Maybe I'll, uh, go Brian Pumper. I'll go Brian Pumper as Brian well. Pumper and the gas. <laughs> What do you got for us, the gas? <laughs> <laughs> his backing man is butts? Is that... <laughs> All right. Uh, the fake porn star is Dennis Filler. Ah. Oh. Which of the following is not a like, real male like porn off, star? Like off Dennis Miller? You got it. <laughs> like, oh, you're pussy. Now, like I don't want to jerk off on a rant here. <laughs> now, back to my lack of uh, general knowledge. I don't even really know who Dennis Miller is. You're not missing much. Okay. Oh. A, Van Damage. <laughs> B, Tommy Blade. C, Jack Spiro. D, Wesley Pipes. <laughs> Wesley Pipes is real. Spiro is a Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't so, know. Which feels like a that, red flag. That, that, children that, of the 90s are of age now. They yeah, can, that, that rules nothing out for me. They're, they're no, allowed I'm just, to compete. I'm just introducing facts. Some poor woman getting railed by a Hitmonchan. <laughs> <laughs> You said Hitmonchan like Hank Hill would have. <laughs> Damn it, buddy. You're watching what these hente videos of that goddamn Hitmonchan, Hitmonchan <laughs> punching the back of that Raichu's head. He's weak to fighting, Bobby. You're going to score a critical hit, and he's going to KO, and that's rape, Bobby. You're raping that Pokemon, goddammit. Peggy, keep the boy away. Damn it. From- <laughs> I, I want just- a fucking pocket rat. I got my Lapras body pillow. <laughs> Damn it, Bobby, I was saving that master ball for Mewtwo. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, fuck everything. The fucking answer is A. (coughs) Uh, It was utterly irrelevant. (laughs) I'll say Jack Spiro is fake. All right, Jack Spiro is fake. (laughs) 
Oh, you got to wonder what the real Jack Sparrow porn name is then. What could it be? Uh, I, don't I mean, Jack Sparrow is already such a perfect porn name. Yeah, yeah, it really is. The best male porn name I've ever heard in my life is Johnny Depp. Oh, that's Fuck. good. Yeah, I should. I was thinking about using it, but I was like, they got to know Johnny Depp. But I, I always decided if I became like a male stripper, my name would be James T. Girth. It's pretty great. <laughs> Set phasers from stun to thrill. <laughs> Number four. James T. Girth. <laughs> A. Of the Zeppelin fortune. <laughs> A. Chad Easy. Mm-hmm. B. Anthony Hardwood. C. Dick Smothers Jr. <laughs> or D. Bobby Vital. Of the Smothers triplets. <laughs> Jesus. God, I'm not going to appeal to young people at all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, or remember, old people. Remember their draft dodging bluegrass song, kids? Uh, the junior is a red flag to me. <laughs> that really went viral back in the day. I'll t- <laughs> I would really love if, the, although I like that there would be a junior in porn. There'd be like a porn. The legacy. Di- yeah, like a porn cult of the father. You know? <laughs> it's uh, the awful handing of the baton. Yeah, you, you never lived up to your dad, fucking Jack Spiro Sr. <laughs> I, I'm going to say Anthony Hardwood because that seems like a name, like an alternate name Connor would have for himself that he calls himself when he's like has a bad gig in, you know, Tulare <laughs> or wherever he performs. <laughs> I'm going to say Chad Easy. Okay. The fake porn star, Chad Easy. Oh, whoa. Keith is, Keith actually, uh, he might get three points if you get this last question. Number five, all real or all fake? Okay. I'll just preemptively say all fake. A, Ronald Reagan. <laughs> B, Maverick with three Ks. <laughs> C, Angel Sins, or D, Billy Fistel. <laughs> Those are for sure all fake. <laughs> I want to say Maverick with three Ks is real, and that he's like in some kind of like cuckolding porn. <laughs> nice, like he's just a giant black man who plows white women. And oh, they just get dude. off in the rage of it. That would really that would be the Django of porn, really. Yeah. <laughs> just Christoph Waltz just cries while he <laughs> fucks the shit out of Broomhilda. <laughs> So I'm going to say all many uses of the N-word, though. Um, that was our most recent reference, and it was a film from three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. We need, we need to, like, we need, like, a... No, like we were a, actually referring to the original Django from uh, the 60s. <laughs> you're referring to Django Reinhardt. Where the <laughs> fuck is our <laughs> reverb monkey when I want to do the Django fucking spaghetti was? Django! <laughs> Damn it. All right, we're going to do it for real. Right. One, two, three. Django! Django! Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna, so not I'm worth gonna it. go all all real. I'll go all fake. Those are all fake. <laughs> Billy Fistel, come on, Keith man. Keith Carey sweeps it, dude. On it, dude, I, yeah. This is not my best week of prepared <laughs> writing. Like it's, it's oh man, this game was terrible. Cause Keith won. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's yeah. pretty much how I feel. Uh, yeah, I'm I, I'm down with that. Okay, well, I think this was another great episode of the Mean Boys I podcast. Think so too. Thank you guys for listening. Um, please subscribe and rate and review us on iTunes. It helps us helps us out a great deal. If you want to. Send a, a message to the show that uh, we could talk about on the air. There's, there's a contact form on the Mean Boys site. Oh. Um, trying to see what else we were. Yeah, we got some other exciting stuff in the works, some live shows, uh, maybe some stickers. Uh, I would, could be I would like to plug that I'm going to be at the Pioneer Underground in Reno, Nevada. So any Nevada fans we probably don't have, uh, come out and see me. It's going to be fun. It's just, well, the, the fact that you think any of our fans that actually are in other parts of the world would leave their basements to come <laughs> to a live performance. Like, we're, we're busy skinning these animals. We'll get like, to whoa, whoa, whoa. That sounds like there's going to be a lot of eye contact. Uh, well, it's it's, it's, oh, it's a really disheveled, like, you know, tragic town up there. So I would imagine that, like, I would imagine our podcast appeals to the hopeless. In yeah. A lot of ways. <laughs> oh, and Keith and I will be uh, burning people in Venice Beach for the Burn Booth uh, web series at around noon or some shit. Look Ooh. it up on Facebook. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, March nineteenth, I'm recording my album at Hypno Comics uh, in Ventura. Connor will be opening for me on that. And uh, Joe will is maybe not be present. Involved. Good enough friends to get the call. <laughs> no, I'm not. Sorry, the, buddy. The, these plans were made pre-podcast. Otherwise, I, just, that's I would have felt that's, much worse about that's not fine. You to do that's it. fine. That's <laughs> fine. I, I, I don't share. Hey, your, Ramsey, you want to do a spot? I don't. I don't, I don't share your outside of the city that matters. You know, <laughs> camaraderie. You know, I, I was going to plug the rest of my shows, but I don't want to make you guys feel bad. So I think we're going <laughs> to sign off. <laughs> <laughs> hey. You can catch Connor wherever Mexican moms are getting sassy. Yeah. <laughs> mean boys and girls, I love you to death. Uh, people saying nice shit about the podcast really makes my. It really. I, it's so nice, I can't even process it. Like, I it really. makes me feel ill.